Hey everybody, this is Birch, and I've been asked to, to comment on this a few times, um, but it's it's such a kind of sticky, thorny topic that I I never know completely where to begin, and so I either, in my mind, I either come to a very flippant, almost simple answer like, hey, how about you people just don't worry about it, or I feel like I have to, uh, you know, come up with a you know fifty page novel of uh, of what's going to go on with charts and graphs and everything else. Nobody wants that, uh, but. I, people do like charts and graphs. I, I need to get back and I just need to have the time to kind of sit down and put the structure out for some of these comic sales analysis uh, videos I used to that I know a lot of you enjoy and like those charts and graphs. They just they can be kind of time consuming to do and I've been hopping around uh, a lot lately, but they, they'll return. They will return. I had a lot of people who joined the channel for those, so sorry if you've been missing out on them. But the, the basic topic here is around whitewashing and in particular, not uh, whitewash. So, okay, I got to define a bunch of terms. Whitewashing is this uh, more, it's, it's more of an internet uh, term, but it's, it's basically where you take a non-white character and you strip away some of the, either the skin color or the culture or aspects about the character to make it, uh, they, they say more white, but really a better way to put it might be more kind of culturally homogenous. Basically, you, you make it so it's, uh, uh, I, I don't know, back in the 70s and the 80s, uh, there was an approach on TV to try and make uh, characters as accessible as possible by as many people as possible. There was some term for it that had some like melting pot characters. And so this was an idea that, you know, you didn't want it. It was bad. It was, it was considered negative if you had characters be too cultural, and cultural is not a euphemism here, I mean, just anything that kind of identified them as, as something other than just, you know, blank slate, um, that this, this would confuse audiences. I think over time that, that people realized that wasn't quite true. I remember there was some analysis done on, of all shows, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, talking about how when they did episodes, it actually dipped in slightly to some of the, the cultural aspects of uh, the characters that it, it, you know, the ratings did well. People seem to figure it out. Turns out people are are actually, you know, relatively smart, and they can, they don't need to have everything just dumbed down to a huge extent. So anyway, the, but it's just a sign of how times have changed. So now there's a, there's kind of a almost a, a very trigger happy approach from a number of people, primarily on Twitter, who will look at anything and be very quick to throw out the whitewashing card whenever anything goes one direction. Now, interestingly enough, I mean, not interestingly enough, the same criticism is not levied the other direction. If they take a historically white character and they make the character person of color, uh, there is no outrage that comes. There's no, like, you're uh, whatever the opposite of black of uh, whitewashing or blackwashing. I don't, that makes no sense. So the, the term, a lot of these internet terms irritate the crap out of me. But anyway, uh, just the term itself. So uh, this is something that's gone on, and uh, in particular, it, uh, it, it kind of pops up at various moments. A, a relatively newer trend, and I don't know if trend's exactly the right word, but uh, a relatively newer trend is that uh, fan art gets made, and the fan either, A, uh, changes the race of the character, and then that generates outrage if it goes from a person of color to a uh, white character, or, and this is what's hitting more likely, which makes this entire thing more stupid, the artist in question is using kind of lighting techniques, is, uh, is experimenting with colors in the image, the entire image. And so the character just looks, you know, pigment lighter than, quote-unquote, normal. Uh, this has generated a lot of attention around uh, Pokemon, around... Uh, the sunspot for the new mutants. People are saying, "Oh, he's he's he's." They made him too lighter skinned. Um, it's uh, you know various comic characters, and then um, you know more recently, uh, there's a show called Infinity Train, where there is a a clearly uh, black character uh, who's I, you know this. By the way, this is the trap. It's it's a it's described as a black darker skinned character. Uh, why is that a trap? It's the darker skinned. It's it's saying that. Uh, there's a certain hue, a certain pigment, and if you stray from that, then somebody's going to accuse you of whitewashing. Uh, the challenge is people who do this art, you know, there's there's this whole concept of pop art where, I mean, like, God, you look at uh, Nagel and, and artists from the very distant past who would have characters lit up in, you know, blue colors or 
all kinds of different uh, different skin color. Uh, they're not necessarily trying to change the race. It's just the color palette is completely different. I don't know if I'm describing this well at all, but the point is um, sometimes people make art and it's, uh, you know, you're looking at it and you're going, okay, was the character racially swapped here? Or are they trying to do some kind of artistic expression using color overall? Is this, was the artist trying to present the character as if they had a, a big spotlight on them? Are they trying to neon eyes? I don't know if that's the word, certain aspects of the costume and the skin color. I mean, just there's, it's, there's a lot of questions here and Twitter being Twitter, uh, people very rapidly come in and are quick to throw down the, uh, this is whitewashing, which is very quickly followed up by you are racist or you are, you know, other things. So with this infinity train, uh, image that you basically had, um, this, uh, this main character, it was clearly black. I mean, this isn't a case where, you know, it's, ah, the race is not clear. It's clearly a, a black character in the show. And an artist, uh, somebody who works on the cast uh, somewhere in the, in the show, created this piece of art with this character that where the contrast was all hyped up. Now, the character is very pale in this image, uh, but it's hard to say. I mean, all other parts are pale as well. The clothing... Uh, everything is kind of pale. So I'm not, I'm not saying this in a, no, no, it was, it was, there was no way that, uh, that this was, um, you know, this was, this, this is purely innocent. It's not that, I, I mean, it's clearly a different color in the image, but you, you very quickly get to the, who cares? Now I, some people care a lot. And, and so we'll talk about that in a minute, but anyway, this image, the, the character is more orangish. The hair, which is, of course, just black hair in the normal show, is, is portrayed as, you know, light blue and purple and, you know, and, and, uh, and that. And so it's, it's not clear what's going on here. The image is clearly stylized like kind of 80s pop art. That's what it looks like. Does the character look black anymore? No. The character doesn't really look human anymore uh, based on kind of some of the colors that are being used. But anyway, this, this picture gets drawn. Uh, people complain. Fans uh, rise into action and start, uh, you know, aggressively trying to get uh, this this art pulled. And uh, here's where people are now complaining about. So, th so basically, this, this form letter gets made that everybody starts sending, talking about how harmful it is, and they're doing it in a a very kind of over the top way. It's not like, hey, this art is, uh, you know, is is racially swapped, and we think that's offensive. No, they they directed the mail as this was, this art is an attack on black fans. It is uh, horribly traumatizing. It plays into uh, concerns of colonization. It, uh, it is a uh, absolute uh, kind of sets us back in the civil rights movement, like 40 years. I mean, it's like over the top of, of this. And, and I think that that's one area where you have to, you have to have some perspective here. This is, a show that very few people have even heard of, um, Infinity Train. It's it's run on the cusp of kind of cancellation for a long time because it's just it's not a mainstream show, and so this piece of fan art that a crew member. I mean, keep in mind they didn't change this character in the show. This didn't get printed. But basically, one of the crew members made this piece of art based on a character was going to go into some gallery somewhere. And, uh, the, you know, ultimately they decided the gallery and the artist decided it wasn't worth the, the issue. So they withdrew the piece of art. Uh, the gallery then came out with a statement saying, if the artist changes their mind and wants to display it, we will display it because it's art and art is art. And people are just losing their minds over that. They're losing, they, they really hate the gallery statement of if the artist decides to change their mind, we believe in freedom of expression. We'll, we'll put the art up and people are like, that is unacceptable. This is again, uh, a slap at the fans and traumatizing, hugely disappointing, kind of all the words come out. And, and yet this was, I mean, you would have to absolutely dig to even find this piece of art anywhere. It, is, it wasn't official art. It was just, it was like, no one's going to see this. So is it worth all this fuss? That's how a lot of the, the whitewashing complaints on Twitter tends to go is this stuff is extremely obscure and because it has some loose connection somewhere to something, people find it, get angry about it, start petitioning, start sending this stuff out. 
And I think they're, they'd have more success, the people doing this petitioning, if the art was, or, or sorry, if the, if the letters were subtle. But because the letters go like crazy over the top, I mean, if you're, you know, somebody involved in all this and you're getting this, this form letter, it's clearly a form letter when you get like five or six that are exactly the same. And that's what happened here that talks about how uh, this art is inspiring uh, racial injustice and colonialism. Like, what do you, I mean, what do you even do with that? Seriously. I mean, even if you completely agree that this is wrong, the art shouldn't have been made, it shouldn't be displayed and everything else. I mean, you're, you're, you're going way too far too fast if that's what you're, you're putting out there. So um, this is the challenge with a lot of this stuff. And what's happening very quickly is that companies are just learning to insulate and, and ignore stuff like this. So more and more complaints are getting dismissed. And you're seeing kind of this increasing backlash in Facebook and Twitter of people saying, you know, this is highly disappointing. This is, you know, pissing on the fans, the true fans. And this is the company is doubled. Like they're, they're very angry that they're not being listened to, but increasingly people are not being listened to because the complaints are so over the top and frantic. It, it just, it makes no sense, especially for a piece of outside non-official art, uh, which the, you know, the, the, the people who are angry about this uh, in this thread keep talking about how the person was a crew member, the person was a crew member. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean much. Shows have a lot of crew members that do all kinds of things. And, and so the only reason it's getting brought up here is because they're trying to get that person fired, bluntly. Um, this is a, a, it, it's a, it's a, cra it's, it's a, it's a reaction that is not going to serve anybody well. And it very quickly starts to lose track of whatever the original point was. And I, I think the original point, in a lot of ways, it's why I started off the video the way I did, is once upon a time, shows did try and just, you know, water down everyone's personality to the least offensive, most uh, universal type thing. And it, it, it was not as entertaining. Television was worse. And so I think a lot of shows kind of got their act together in the 80s and the 90s and said, you know what, we can have distinct personalities. We can have distinct characters and, and races and cultures and other things represented here, and we can make a good story out of it. It could be fun. And, and that seemed to be a bluntly kind of a good outcome. It just, you know, maybe there needed to be just more of it. Uh, you know, I, I think that there's tons of stories out there. There's tons of interesting cultures and interesting things out there. And I think if you're going to explore all those, good. That's, that's lots of storytelling capabilities that you can get into. And that's exciting. We should encourage that. Um, but, uh, you know, where we've landed now is this very bizarre approach that if I'm predicting the future, we're going to go right back to the watered down kind of homogenous uh, nobody really addresses anything because companies are going to be terrified of representing any culture that they're going to get this, they're going to trigger some kind of Twitter avalanche of people saying you're not representing the culture in exactly the right way. That's the future of all this. And uh, it's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. Um, also wrapped up in all this is, uh, is this uh, cancellation. So it's, it's the, um, the people who are complaining saying, you know, we're not trying to cancel anything. We're trying to, uh, you know, get, get consequences for these actions. And this is something I hear more and more like, we're not, we're not trying to cancel anything. We're just trying to point out the specific individual who did something that we don't like. And we want to shine a spotlight on them, get their name out there, get everybody to be aware of them. And uh, we want them to realize that what they did was wrong and have to go through some kind of punishment sequence. Uh, we don't we don't want the person fired. We just want their life to be miserable forever, and you know we don't uh, want them to be able to work on shows that are inclusive. It's like, well, that sounds like canceling. It's like, no, 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 no. We're not trying to cancel. We're just trying to get consequences for some of these actions. And it's it's this it's this playing with words kind of thing. And what what people want is absolutely the person to get fired and and rolled out and the company to uh, issue an apology and say, we will try harder and everything else. The, the crazy part about this is um, this entire, this entire situation here is uh, 
is very, you know, it, it, of the idea of fans objecting to something, writing letters, demanding to be heard, everything else, is often decried in the media as being toxic fandom of, of fans kind of getting it. And I, I made a video that really pissed off this, uh, what, what the, the X group uh, that does a podcast and everything else, um, that saying that when, when they were going on and on and on about Brett Booth on X-Men, that this was in effect toxic fandom because it, it felt like it was like this, this is what it feels like. And, um, you know, they, they didn't like being called that, but you, you kind of got, I mean, it's all the same. It, it really is. It, it can't be the things you agree with is worth being outraged for. And the things you don't agree with is toxic fandom. If you're using the exact same approach, uh, whitewashing in general, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure that anyone complaining about this at this point is truly helping to protect and grow and uh, expand uh, cultural representation in comics. I think this is not, it, it, it's not leading to that. It's not creating the result. So if the result people want is to, you know, have more things represented, I think this is a terrible way to go about it. I think all this does is going to, to do the opposite. People are going to be inclined to do less because they just don't want to be involved. But that's my take on it. So that's the, the, the big whitewashing kind of controversy. I remember in um, Doctor Strange, the ancient one, that got accused of because of the casting and everything else. They leaned into the, the Celtic origins as opposed to the uh, Tibetan origins. And I mean, you know, always something. Why? Did, why by the way, you know, the big mystery as to why Disney a company is trying to get uh, their movies distributed and uh, funded and and put in China as much as possible. Why would they erase a Tibetan character? Hmm, I don't know. That's a uh, boy. That's a mystery. I can't imagine why uh, Disney would want to do that. Uh, for whatever reason, all the people angry about the uh, the uh, whitewashing of that character from kind of Tibetan culture to Celtic culture, um, you know. Uh, they, they neglected to mention that, hey, there was a business reason why Disney was doing this. You may not like it, but, uh, but you know, that's what it was. So anyway, let me know your thoughts below on all this whole thing. This all feels increasingly to me like something we should all just work really hard to ignore because uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of silliness. Anyway, uh, there you go. Uh, like and subscribe, of course, as always. And thanks for listening.